Uh, Mr. President, this afternoon the Senate uh, will vote on a bill recently passed by the House to suspend the debt ceiling for four months. First, uh, I would like to commend the House uh, on one aspect of the legislation, which I strongly support, and that is the suspension of salary for members of Congress if we do not pass a budget by April 15th. Uh, as I mentioned on the floor yesterday, Congress by law is required to pass a budget, but it's been nearly four years since it has done so. And as a result, the Senate has blatantly ignored our legal duty, not to mention our moral duty, to enact a budget. This is completely irresponsible, and quite frankly, it's embarrassing. So if this body can't fulfill its most fundamental duty under law to pass a budget, then I say we don't deserve to get paid. However, another aspect of the bill that uh, would suspend enforcement of the federal debt limit until at least May, and according to uh, recent statements issued by the administration, possibly until August, uh, that concerns me. And I understand why the House has taken this approach uh, for political, tactical reasons. But unfortunately, this decision only continues the practice of governing from crisis to crisis, from cliff to cliff and pushing through flawed, haphazard legislation at the last minute like we did with the vote on the fiscal cliff. A great example of how this body should not function. As, as a result of this practice, members are left with deciding uh, between choosing uh, the lesser of two evils. Never again will I, nor I believe many of my colleagues, support any legislation that is negotiated in secret, bypasses the regular process where we have an opportunity to take it up in committee and uh, amend it if necessary, and, and, and then present it to the Senate for debate and evaluation or amendment. Never again will I support something that takes us into the wee hours of, uh, of the night, into the New Year's Eve and into New Year's Day, and then just have a few minutes to try to evaluate it with no debate. Uh, no, no opportunity to amend. This is no way to govern a country. It's no way to strengthen a weak economy and spur job creation. And it's no way to restore confidence among consumers and investors, such a critical factor in making for a robust growth, which we are not enjoying right now. Eventually, all of us have to stand up and say, enough is enough. Pushing these debates up until the last minute Creating our own fiscal cliffs and passing short-term measures, measures must cease. I've had enough of it. The people of Indiana have had enough of it. The American people across the country have had enough of Washington postponing real action on the most serious challenge facing our country, namely the out-of-control spending into further deficit and debt. Both Republicans and Democrats, the President and the Congress, Liberal and conservative economists and nonpartisan people all agree that our continued increase in debt is unsustainable. And we all know that what has been fueling this fire has engulfed our fiscal house, its spending. But our meager efforts to date to address this looming fiscal calamity are like trying to put out a five alarm fire by an occasional squeeze of a squirt gun. Dare a politician stand here and acknowledge this? Many don't want to. But the truth is this, the main driver of our debt and deficit spending is the runaway mandatory spending on Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security to some extent. Despite those who claim that it's political suicide to touch these programs, and despite the fact that none of us are saying we should eliminate these programs, um, this is an area where many don't want to tread. But I believe these programs, which provide much needed benefits for many Hoosiers and Americans, uh, need to be preserved. Our goal and our challenge here is to find common ground on not how to eliminate these programs, but how to save these programs, both for current retirees and for future generations. But if we don't take steps to reform these programs, we risk not only bankrupting our country, we risk having to tell the recipients of the benefits of these programs that we no longer can fulfill uh, their needs and, their, and our promises. So, Mr. President, 
it's difficult for me to support any effort to increase the debt limit when we continue to avoid taking the necessary steps to eliminate deficit spending and control our debt in the future. Despite several bipartisan attempts over the last two or three years, including efforts by the Simpson-Bowles Committee, the President's Committee, the Gang of Six, and the Super Committee of Twelve, we have failed to put together a credible long-term debt reduction uh, package. So how then can we continue to raise the debt limit over and over again without agreeing on a way to reduce it in the future. Repeatedly and thoughtlessly raising the debt limit represents a political moral hazard, a taxpayer bailout for big government politicians who don't want to be bothered by controlling spending. Congress continually increasing the debt limit is akin to consumers having the ability to increase their own credit card borrowing limit with no oversight. We just keep increasing the credit limit to pay for more and more spending. It's like, it uh, reminds me of uh, the parent dealing with the irresponsible teenager who was given a credit card, asked to stay within the credit limits, but month after month after month con continues to exceed those as the debt piles up and the interest on the debt accumulates. Eventually, the parent has to take away the card and take the scissors and cut it up. At what point do we in the Congress take the congressional credit card, cut it up, and get control of our spending? I urge my colleagues and the President to focus not on how to get enough votes to raise the borrowing limit again, but focus on how truly we can begin the essential task of eliminating deficit spending and reducing our debt as a percentage of GDP. You know, part of what, make, what makes America so remarkable is that we have the ability in this great country to control our destiny. The problems we face are not insurmountable, but they are not avoidable either. And it's time we take a stand and do what the people we represent sent us here to do. It's time we make the changes we pledged we would make when we were seeking office. And it's time we take control of our country's financial future and put America on a path to prosperity. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor and notice, note the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the